What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Hit Phil's Neil Reviews. I'm here with my review for The Book of Boba Fett, Season 1, Episode 2, The Tribes of Tatooine. So if you have not seen the episode, definitely give it a watch as there are some spoilers for the episode, a very nifty Easter egg, and of course my overall impressions of the episode. So with that being said, this episode definitely improves on what we saw in the first, so while I did not think that the first episode was dull or boring or anything like that by any stretch of the imagination, this episode progresses the story a little bit more, kind of along the lines of rounding out what we saw in the first episode. So we see the inter interrogation of the um, bounty hunter or the spy guy that was trying to kill Boba Fett, who leads him back to the mayor of, Ta of Mos Espa, who leads Boba Fett then back to his den to announce that the politics of Tatooine are more complicated than Boba Fett was initially led to believe or understand in the form of Jabba's cousins coming to stake a claim on uh, Jabba's territories on in the region. So we learned that the twins have come there to assert their control, but Boba resists. There, with his conversation with Fennec Shand, he is hoping that um, him asserting uh, that Boba asserting his claim is the end of it. But he also understands that huts don't necessarily let things go, especially with um, as far as money and control is concerned. So I'm curious to see how they deal with that, but. I am glad to see, or I was excited to see more of the Hutt family hierarchy and what happens when one of them is killed off. So kind of the internal politics or a kind of surface level internal politics of the Hutt clan that they came potentially all the way from Nalhata, the home world of the Huts, to stake their claim. Um, and I like that we see um, Boba's knowledge of the galaxy and the Huts especially by his language and the stuff he's picked up over and knowledge that he's picked up over the years to um, basically hold his ground. Uh, the one little bit of information from this scene that I found particularly interesting and revelatory was the Wookiee gladiator that is coming in tow with the huts. So I didn't necessarily think that he was a slave by the conversation of it, but I liked that Boba Fett immediately pegged him, the Wookiee, who I guess is supposed to be Black Karstan, Kar I'm probably saying that wrong, who as a bounty hunter that Boba is aware of. So over the so that's the other bit of side backstory that I'm curious to see is a one how Boba ultimately met him if they went on any missions together or anything like that. But reading a little bit of his backstory online, apparently the scars that he got on his face were because of a duel with Obi Wan that um, Darth Vader had sent him on a mission to kill or capture. So. I'm kind of curious to see if that's going to ultimately be a scene that we get in the Obi-Wan series or potentially a surface level like preview or um, like a reveal at the end of the Book of Boba Fett to see how that all happened and how that came to be. So a particular a brief but intriguing scene there. The biggest scene probably aside from the ending sequence with the train heist as far as the first half of the episode goes is the whole scene at what looks to be Tashi Station. So if you have closed captioning on uh, when Boba goes to start his initial raid to get the land speeders and start training the Tuscans on um, the uh, kind of warfare that they're not used to, we see a couple who are being harassed by the local gang. And when if you have closed captioning on, you learn that the lady's name is Cami, who turns out to be or is supposed to be Luke's or Luke Skywalker's friend back from Star Wars A New Hope during that time frame. So if you go back and see the deleted scenes uh, for A New Hope, which are on Disney Plus as well, you'll see that generally her face and then her boyfriend's face who was supposed to be Fixer is supposed to be that same couple who are still hanging out at Tashi Station. And that's kind of how I made that connection. But they're still hanging out there. Um, everyone's basically left them. So 
Um, that was a nifty little Easter egg for this episode. So overall, an interesting, interesting sequence there. Um, as far as the rest of the episode goes, the whole train heist thing was very Solo-esque. So kind of along the lines of the train sequence from the, from Solo, a Star Wars movie where they're trying to get the coaxium um, for that train heist. But in this case, it's... It's a more simpler purpose, but as it turns out, the um, criminal elements who had been harassing the uh, Tuscan Raiders are also um, transporting spice, which was imported from the slave mines of Kessel. So a nice little thing there. And as it turns out, um, doing a little bit of research because um, Boba Fett sends them back to their syndicate to tell them that any debts have, will have to be repaid 10 times over. And they do have to now pay a toll or basically a uh, travel tax to the Tuscans because it is their ancestral home. But he mentions a syndicate. So initi- so I, I, the first time around, I was kind of drawing a blank, but I was also questioning why that they looked fami- the, that those syndicate guys look familiar. And then the syndicate thing was kind of also um, like jogging my memory. And as it turns out for me, it looks like this is a group that's associated with the Pike Syndicate who we saw towards, I want to say towards the end of Star Wars, a Clone Wars, maybe in Rebels as well, but kind of during that time time frame is when we, or definitely during the Clone Wars era is when we see a lot of the Pikes. So a uh, little bit of drawing on that lore as far as the various criminal organizations that are out in the Star Wars galaxy. Um, and then a pretty interesting scene that I thought uh, mirrored or kind of felt like a nod to Black Panther was when the Tuscans give Boba Fett that little worm thing to put up his nose and then he goes into a weird trance and then he goes to a tree. It looked very much like the ancestral plane from Black Panther when um, T'Challa goes to the ancestral plane to talk to his dad and have that kind of inspiration for what he needs to do next with the panthers. So I was kind of wondering who those creatures are. Are those the animals that are always with the um, Tuscans? Are they the Tuscan like ancestors of the Tuscans themselves? Potentially Boba Fett's ancestors um, or even Jabba. My first thought was Jabba's but that kind of felt silly but it's also possible that because we don't have too much of the new lore that maybe Jawas and Tuskens are descended from um, similar um, beings and then at some point they kind of split to go into two directions kind of like the Rakatan Empire from Star Wars and New Republic where the light and dark was split off so Jawas are like the business side of things and then the Tusken Raiders deal more with the warfare and anger sides side not to say that the jawas are on the good side but kind of that that's kind of where the split happened so a uh, pretty interesting scene there so i'm kind of curious to see if they're gonna elaborate on that a little more and then finally i liked how the scene ended with um crafting a gaffy stick is about as intricate and time honored to the tuscans as lightsabers are to the jedi so the purpose of that whole dream sequence was for Boba to come back with his own branch and then ultimately craft his own gaffy stick. So it's kind of like a gaffy stick is tied to the uniqueness of each of the Tuscans who wield it. So I guess Boba is now officially part of that Tuscan tribe, but it's kind of like the, the best parallel is with um, the Jedi where each lightsaber is a unique reflection of the Jedi who wields it. And um it's kind of echoing their unique abilities and that sort of thing to make it unique to each individual person. So overall, a very good episode. So now that that's all done, um, I'm kind of curious to see where we're going to go from here. If we're going to now progress more into Jabba's um, travels and troubles with exerting his dominance over the um, territories that used to belong to Jabba, um, if he's going to understand more, or he, maybe he's going to have to start um, adopting more of the customs of the criminal elements, so he's going to have to create his litter, make more announcement that he's progressing, um, and we're going to see how he ultimately decides to rule with um, respect instead of fear, or how he's going to um, deal with that, so 
um, all in all to me, a good start, good initial couple of episodes. So I'm curious to see where they take things from here. So that's all there is for this review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, what did you like, dislike about the episode? Are there Easter eggs that I potentially missed or anything like that? You can copy or you can comment on this post on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode and until next time.